I wanted to take a minute to talk about an idea that I had for making Johnson Sioux compost in a cold climate. As I mentioned in previous videos, some of the issues that we had was uh, the water that we were applying to keep it at the 60% moisture level was dripping down the vent shafts. And in our cold climate here near the Great Lakes in Wisconsin, those large foreign vent shafts created a very big stack effect or chimney effect where the warm air was actually pulling a lot of cold air from the bottom up through the pile or material and actually cooled the pile to the point where we went from about 140 degrees to 40 degrees in a couple days. So it basically shut down the microbial activity. Obviously, the colder it gets, the less microbial activity there is. So I got this idea that, well, why don't we actively blow the pile, as in this picture here, where I'm making a section or wafer inside the tote inside the middle of the tote, the outside is filled with composting material that is made out of really coarse wood chips that surround, like, I don't know, I wrote on there, three inch perforated PVC and maybe it could be smaller. You're only gonna need a couple short runs in there and then have the blower hooked to a timer. Or if you got really sophisticated, you could actually have a temperature probe and use a freak drive and vary the speed of the blower depending on the temperature. but Anyway, the point being that you're controlling the amount of air that you're sending in there in such a way that it's enough to keep microbial activity going, but not so much that you're cooling the whole mass of material down, which is what's happening in our cold climate. So, you know, if you actually look at a aerated static pile, it has a blower on the end and then you got your perforated pipe and then it's going into wood chips or something like that and you got your composting material then you have an insulating layer on the outside so as i was thinking about it more i'm like well why am i even trying to put it in a tote why don't i just make a windrow which if you're doing it to scale is going to be much easier and it's easier to insulate you know if you've got a square tote yeah, you can put straw bales around it and foam board on the top like we did, but like I said, I may, if we have time in the hoop house where it's not heated, but it's out of the wind, make a small windrow like I was showing here, which is just your typical aerated static pile setup, and try blowing it and controlling the time such that it doesn't cool the pile down and I'm going to be very interested to see how well that pile, well, I know the pile will heat well, but how long it heats and at what temperatures and so on. So, um, you know, I showed a video previously, uh, David West out in Colorado, who was, who had a big setup where he was making Johnson Sioux inside a very large hoop house, like I said, out in Colorado. And they're colder than us, but I looked it up and they actually have a hundred, over 100 days more sun than we do. So they got a lot of sun there. So you're getting a lot of passive solar coming in during the day. We don't have that. So I'm wondering whether or not this kind of setup where, you know, you've got insulating layer that you put on the top of your pile, either wood chips or if you've got it, composted material and... Um, then blowing it will actually keep it warm enough, long enough to get through the winter and still have good composting. You know, if it, yeah, if you keep it above freezing, you won't kill the microbes and the microbes won't go totally dormant, but the colder it gets, obviously, the less microbial activity you, you'll have. We kept that in that other video I showed inside the bottom of the barn with a heater at 60. That seemed to compost nicely so will the pile stay 
will the core of the pile stay at 60 degrees F if it's just in a hoop house with insulation on the top and we're controlling the amount of air infiltration with the blower? I'm not sure, but obviously if you look at aerated static piles, ASP piles, they do do them in winter climates. And so I think it is possible, and I, you know, so if you think about it overall, if I think about it overall, the pros are uh, you're controlling the air movement, so you're controlling your temperature. Um, you can actually, if your pile gets, if you're on the flip side and you're out west or something somewhere where it's really hot and your pile gets too, too hot, the advantage to this type of method would be you can actually pump extra air into it and cool the pile down. In fact, in larger ASP operations, cooling the pile with air is actually like 70% of the air that gets pumped in is generally for cooling and only something like 10% is to feed, uh, to provide enough oxygen for the microbial activity. So cooling piles is definitely a possibility. Also, if you have too much moisture, um, if your pile gets too wet for whatever reason, you start out too wet or you wa end up watering too much by mistake, you can dry your pile out by pumping more in air into it. So uh, there are other advantages besides being able to control temperature with uh, having a blower on there. Also, you know, some other advantages are, like I said, you can put it in a windrow. You don't have to deal with all these four inch pipes that you're placing every 12 inches and making this tote and cutting out the bottom of a tote or if you're doing it on pallets, cutting out pallets. Um, it's gonna eliminate the issue of runoff through those vent shafts that you're creating. So I'm actually thinking of not only, like I said, using this method where you get rid of the vent shafts, but also controlling uh, the water that we spray on there and having it at, at multiple times sh short duration so that it gives it time to absorb rather than run off the sides or if you are using the vent shafts, down the vent shafts. The question is, of course, you know, anytime you're doing an ASP pile, you have to make sure to monitor, monitor your moisture levels so that you aren't drying. So these are like the cons that, so that you don't dry it out too much. You know, there is the ex extra expense of buying a blower, although, you know, it doesn't take much of a blower to do a tote. You know, I had mentioned a jump tent blower that are for kids, those jump tents that kids like to bounce around in. That's way too much of a blower for a, a small tote. Like if you were just doing a tote, you, you don't need anywhere near that size blower. Um, so the expense shouldn't be too bad. Timers are nothing cost wise. Uh, you have to, you know, watch things like free airspace and moisture content, like I said, but you have to do that regardless. So um, the only other question is, is are you going to get the same kind of high fungal compost in the end and I don't see why not because actually the Johnson Sioux method when you think about it or the beam method is an aerated static bile it's just they're not blowing air and they're just providing it by or aerating it by providing a lot of vent pipes so if you look in the show notes there's I found a link to a really good series of articles aerated, actually on aerated static piles and you might want to take a look at that uh, and by the way, if somebody does this, please send me a note. Go to our website, organicentourage.com, and send me a note because if you post a video or whatever or just want to send me some notes because, I, I like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this built this year. And if someone else does it, I sure would like to hear how it turned out. Okay.